Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Martin Wetzlar, and I'm extremely pleased to be with you tonight. It's a privilege to be at this gala dinner and in the wonderful city of Vancouver. As I get on stage tonight, I am acutely aware that all of you had a choice between going to the Madonna concert <laughs> and, and joining this dinner and, and listening to this speech. So, so no pressure. We'll try to make it uh, worth your while. I'll be joined by Minister Coleman uh, in, uh, in a moment to, uh, for a fireside chat without a fireside, talk about LNG in British Columbia, in the world, and anything else that's on our minds. But let me start with a few opening comments. Um, as I said, competing with Madonna is one thing. Competing with the beautiful picture, the beautiful film about uh, British Columbia is, uh, is quite something else. Um, I was in that film Yesterday, I, I visited the amazingly beautiful town of Kitty Met and its environment, and it's, uh, it's... I saw it on land, I saw it on water, I saw it by air. I was greeted by four whales, or by one whale four times. We didn't quite, <laughs> didn't quite, we weren't quite sure. Um, but we felt very welcome, and I, I, I was able to connect to our staff at LNG Canada and at some of the communities who have uh, welcomed us in their, in their middle as we progress this, pro this project with our partners. Um, coming away from it last night on the plane, the conclusion I reached that was that the opportunity must be bigger than the challenge when it comes to developing LNG projects in BC, and particularly the LNG Canada project in Kitimat. Developing, liquefying, and exporting natural gas resources to the world is a massive opportunity for British Columbia to get right. And that's the reason we're all here, isn't it? And a lot has progressed over the last few years, but also we're acutely aware, of course, that the context has changed. The markets have changed around us. And that isn't a particularly comfortable place for everybody, but it won't stay like this. And here's why. Global demand for energy continues to rise. At Shell, we see global demand for energy rise about 40% between now and 2040, in the next 25 years. So that massive global energy system that we have now needs to grow by another 40% in order to meet demand. And not just your and my demand to fly around the world and heat our homes. A billion people on this planet today are without any access to electricity. And another two billion have only intermittent access to electricity. Such energy access is a human right that we can do something about as an industry. But on top of meeting that energy challenge, that phenomenal growth in the need for energy, we will need to change that energy mix in order to avoid the worst effects of climate change and to clear, clear up the air of Asia cities, but increasingly cities around the world that are being polluted. LNG has a unique role to play as a long-term partner for renewables, as the world transitions, as it must, to a future with much more energy and far fewer emissions, a far, far smaller impact on the environment. Natural gas, as you all know, we're, I'm preaching to the converted. It's abundant, it's versatile. A gas-fired power plant takes much less time to start up and to stop again than a coal-fired plant. So it is the uniquely well-positioned to be the partner for renewables in the future. Even after liquefying, transporting, regasifying gas for power, its CO2 footprint is, is more than 40% less than if you burn coal for power. Now, I'm aware that CO2 is a, is, a, is a sensitive issue in BC, and rightly so. And there are concerns in the province that uh, the birth of an LNG industry could, could raise emissions for the, um, for the state. But I think it is important that we take a holistic view of this and recognize the opportunity that LNG from BC exported into the world, displacing coal, in, in Asia, 
would make a massive positive difference to the CO2 balance in the world, even if you add a bit of emissions to your account here. And that to me highlights the opportunity for Canada and for BC to play a role in decarbonizing the energy system. Now back to my outlook for LNG. We see demand for LNG grow by about 5% per year. This is faster than gas, which is about 2% per year, and faster than energy. There are three main, reason, main reasons why. Reason number one is the increasing number of countries that are choosing LNG as a baseload form of energy. At the turn of the century, we talked about roughly 10, 12 countries importing LNG. Today, there are 30. By 2030, there will be 50. Only this year, we've started to deliver LNG to the shores of Pakistan, Jordan, Lithuania, Poland later on this year. So the market is, is diversifying, growing fast. Secondly, the range of uses for LNG is in increasing rapidly. It used to be a trimlined value chain from an LNG plant to a power plant. But it's quickly becoming a global commodity, finding new sources of demand, new uses, for example, in heavy transport, as you're, as you're doing here in Canada, on water, but also on road. And number three, Although carbon has been absent as an issue on the global agenda a bit, particularly since the global financial crisis gave every, everybody something more urgent to think about, carbon is back. And at the UN summit in Paris in November, world leaders will consider how to create a sustainable, long-term, decarbonized future for energy. Gas and LNG will be critical to any affordable and pragmatic plan that decarbonizes both the developing and the developed world's energy systems. So there's a massive opportunity for LNG there. That's the good news. But, and isn't there always a but when you've just told the good news? And the but is about competitive cost. In the current climate, before any LNG project in the world gets sanctioned, it will need to prove that it's competitive, that its costs are competitive, such that it can survive in any market outcome. Prices high or prices low. A lower cost for gas doesn't only mean that the project is more competitive. It also allows the gas to be priced at a competitive level, at a kind of level that allows gas to penetrate deeply into the energy mix in the world. High gas prices may sometimes seem good news for producers like us. But high gas prices can also displace demand, destroy gas demand, and drive consumers to coal or to other alternatives. And despite that being clear, and if we specifically look at LNG projects, at the moment, costs just aren't competitive enough. Over the last decade, unit costs of LNG projects have crept up to a level where LNG projects just are no longer competitive. And the value chain of contractors, regulators, and investors needs to collaborate much, much more strongly in order to bring the cost back down again for LNG projects to become competitive. The current market affects us all, so we need to work together and call out when our behaviors in terms of bureaucracy or our behaviors in terms of gold plating standards are causing a necessary cost. And we need to call out when regulators or contractors behave in a way that drive up the cost of LNG unnecessarily. In Canada, a significant amount of cost-cutting and fiscal improvement has actually happened over the last 12 months. The accelerated capital cost allowance, the extension of LNG export licenses, halving the LNG export tax. All these are critical to the viability of LNG export projects from BC. But we need to do more. And we will look at, when we look at ways to improve the collaboration in order to do more, everybody has to play a part in this room. One good example is when it comes to labor. In BC, if we've seen authorities, First Nations and their representatives, and the industry work together to really have a labor agenda that allows local communities, regional communities, and Canada to take full advantage of the surge in jobs in LNG that we hope will take place once this industry really takes off. 
boosting the skill of local workers, successful apprenticeships are just a few examples of work that has gone on in this area. And that will really strengthen the robustness of the case for this industry to get born. And while all these efforts are positive, it's important that we are not complacent about it. They must continue to ensure the survival of this industry in British Columbia, or actually, perhaps more timely, the birth of this industry. When I conclude, I want to go back to the benefits of collaboration between all those different players. Collectively, I do think we know what needs to be done. We know more or less who needs to do it and when it needs to be done. But deep collaboration needs a bit more than the what, the how and the when. In my experience, the most successful energy projects have the kind of deep collaboration because all the elements of the projects, all the stakeholders are engaged on the why. Why are we doing this? Why are we creating an LNG business here in British Columbia? So why do we pursue this cause? First and foremost, as a participant from the private sector, we do so because, of course, for investors like Shell, we want to get a fair return on our investment, our technology, our expertise. It's business, after all. So that's one reason why. The other reason why is because we are creating a new industry for British Columbia and Canada, which at scale will make a huge difference to jobs, to opportunities for talent, to revenue for government, by connecting Canada's abundant gas resources to world markets. So that's another good why. And these two reasons why to me are both honorable and compelling reasons to pursue this industry. But perhaps the most honorable and compelling reason for pursuing the birth of LNG export from Canada, is that the delivery at scale of cheap burning natural gas to the shores of developing countries can be a game changer. These developing countries cry out for affordable, stable, non-intermittent energy supply that doesn't pollute their air. And it helps them reduce the kind of energy poverty that should have been extinguished long ago. So tonight in this room, I call on all of you to hold hands and adopt these three reasons why as our common purpose as we drive the creation of this industry. It would give me enormous pleasure to come back to Vancouver. Anyway, look at the weather. And maybe Madonna will be there again. <laughs> but it would give me even more pleasure to return to Vancouver to celebrate a positive investment decision on the LNG joint, uh, Canada Joint Venture. further underlining the bond between Shell and Canada that's more than 100 years old. But I challenge you, if we look back in 10 years' time on this crucial period of 2016-2017, will we conclude that we missed the opportunity because we weren't sharp enough? Or will we jointly be proud of having created, a, created an industry that will do good for this planet, good for BC, and good for the investors for decades to come? I know which side of that story I want to be part of, and I hope you'll join that side of the story too.